if you're not in the habit of knowing what's happening, please change that. And also, if there are rooms you desire to be invited, pursue. Oftentimes, we find ourselves in roles. You desired it, you moved, things have become toxic. What do you do? Toxicity is not always bad. Bad bosses are not always bad. And I'll tell you why. They make you search your soul and make you level up your game. I found myself in a dream job, toxic environment. I was the one crafting the roadmap and I knew if I left, this would have been a premature exit. Because it's always, be it's always keen before you move jobs. People will ask you, what is your track record? Yes, you want to join my company, but what is your track record? Even for you who's seeking investors, I'm sure they ask you, and you can tell me this, what is your track record? So I hunkered down. I hunkered down, push that discussion to a point where I know it's a balance between how do you ensure mental health, you're okay, and pushing really hard. On one end, you're really searching, but on this other side, you're really pushing to deliver. At Microsoft, of course, our major colleagues are in North America, the US. Huge difference. In Kenya, believe it or not, we are huge on passive aggressiveness. Do you agree? Yes. So I'll sit here, I'll tell you, yes, Evelyn will do it. No, we won't. But I'll give you a straight face and say we will do it. But I'll make sure the things that have visibility, like the dashboard needs to turn red, I mean green, it will turn green. But the other softer things, I'll tell you yes, but it won't happen. Or even choice of words. So it's always important to understand who are the stakeholders you're working with? Where, what, what's their culture like? How do they communicate? What words do they use and what do they mean? How are they receiving you? How are you being received? Very important. Now I'll introduce the power of social media again, LinkedIn. For the, for the folks who are employed or even in business, how many of us have an active LinkedIn profile? Very few. Active means, do you post often? Is your, are your skills up to date? Do you see activity? Do you, do you comment on other people's posts? If you're looking for a job, can somebody search? No, it's about algorithms. Are you easily, can, can very somebody see your top skills on LinkedIn? So that is how I managed to escape this toxic relationship. Keep people in this stakeholder, and I've found this very effective every time I change jobs. Number one stakeholder, if you're a leader, People who report to you, reportees. Another key stakeholder, the person you report to, your boss. Another key stakeholder, the people who your role interacts with. Meaning, I found it useful, sit down and find out what is their key performance indicator. What is in their balance scorecard? How is it related to yours? You know why? If you make them shine, chances are they'll be the ones blowing your trumpet in that room that you're not in. So it's always important to understand who are the stakeholders you're working with? Where, what, what's their culture like? How do they communicate? Why is tech important? For both business individual, wherever you are. One of the things that we've done at uh, ADC, and I've been here for six, this is my seventh month, we've gone around the country in universities. We've only visited nine universities, and our plan is to visit more into next year. We're going to universities and telling students, especially even if you're not taking a STEM-related course, take huge interest in tech. You do not have to be a coder, but just get that general understanding on digital skills. What is digital? You might ask. Can I use Excel? Can I use Word? Can I draw up a trend analysis? 
Can I use social media to market my business? Just get a basic understanding. Why is this important? If you look at India as an example, India was very intentional years gone by in terms of investing in tech. That's why they are reaping the fruits today of digital revolution. In this region, we were passed by the industrial revolution. The one, is it industrial? The one manufacturing of cars, of things. That never happened in Africa. But we have a chance, beginning with ourselves and our children. That's why at Microsoft ADC, we are very keen. Start off in colleges, in campus. Then we're also going to TVETs. And then we'll go to primary schools. And if your child, if you're a parent in this room and your child has an interest in matters digital, it doesn't mean that they'll be techie, but digital skills will be important. Dokas is a student at JQuart. She's one of my mentees. Dokas signed up for internship and was successful at Microsoft ADC. Just by virtue of that, joining and doing a good job, she's gone back to campus. You graduate next year? But she, we already gave her a, an offer letter for her to join after she graduates. Yes, speaks to the demand of these software engineering jobs. And it is across Africa. There, there are some roles we can't even get locally. Now, let me talk about the future skills. Key skills that will be important, especially as, and we also talk about it in universities. Number one, there's the digital skills. She's touched on one of them, automation. There's also things like artificial intelligence, machine learning, software development. And I'm mentioning them so that if you have family who are interested, please facilitate. Oftentimes people wonder, Catherine, I, did, I studied ABCD, but it's no longer marketable. I've seen people switch careers. I have a colleague at ADC, she studied microbiology. She now does UX design. UX design, are the people who make sure your phone looks good or you know the way you switch on your iPhone and or Android environment, it just looks beautiful. She switched. So you could be at a place you're like, my goodness, I've looked for jobs, my LinkedIn is, is kosher, but I'm not getting it. I'm not getting and I need to really improve my earning power. Consider switching. Do a bit of research. Green economy, blue economy, uh, digital. And then there's a the last one, care economy. What happened when COVID hit? More people embraced wellness. I was just talking to the lady I was sitting next to and I was telling her the way, I'm sure you know people nowadays who say, oh, I'm lactose intolerant. Oh, yeah, I don't take gluten. That's care. Health and wellness is catching on. So that's also another area one can consider to pivot if you're really feeling stuck. Sometimes you might wonder, so where do I get all these skills? There's so many platforms online, and they are free. And some, you just need a credit card. It's less than $30. I mean, you saw my math, 4,500, 22,500, I moved from 9K to 30K. If the skills is required, you will get the job. I just told you today, we're still hiring software engineers at ATC. And there are times we go for long, we cannot find the one. So identify what is that key skill that is required. Do you need to pivot? And to pivot, you need to invest. What does that investment look like? We all know how Tala and Branch entered this market. They really disrupted banking. At Cidian, I felt I was, very, I was not proficient in terms of matters fintech. Yet I was charged to lead the digital transformation of the bank. So one of the things I did, at CDN we did not have money for training, and I'm not throwing shade. What I'm illustrating is oftentimes companies do not have money, but it's not a priority to train staff. It's not that they don't think highly of you know, it's just the way the finances are. But why not pay for yourself? I meet people who say, I, the company should train me. No. Invest in yourself. So I enrolled for a course at Oxford University. My goodness. It cost me some. But it changed my earning power by the time I joined Stanley. I won't disclose the figure. But my point is, if the company is not paying for you, 